So let's take a look at the try except statement. Try except statements are really easy, um, but they can kind of get you in trouble too. So there's some things I want to highlight. We use try except statements as a way to easily throw quick, simple, meaningful messages to our users um, or redirect the program in a way that, that deals with uh, errors. Uh, and if that's kind of convoluted because you're going to see as the programs get more complicated, our use of try and accept can get more complicated. But in its simplest form, try and accept is just a quick and easy way to say if there's any error at all, do this instead. Okay, and for basic programming, that's fine. For this class, uh, early in the class here, you don't really need to deal with errors um, particularly meaningfully, right? You just need to make sure that you're communicating those errors. As we get more advanced, you're gonna have to actually deal with the errors, meaning not only you're gonna have to say, hey, there's an error, but you're gonna then have to say, and this is what we need to do to correct it. Um, but so let's take a look. We've got this nice piece of code here, and uh, first we check to make sure our code actually works. Uh, I never uh, start to put in try accepts until my program is fully functional or my module is fully functional. Um, the reason being is once you start putting the try accepts in, you don't get useful messages. What do I mean by that? So if I do this and I put in a letter instead, which users are going to do, um, let's pull this over so you can see this. You can see this, this whole big error message. And you probably just have been ignoring these, right? You see an error and you just glaze over and go right back to work, but these errors are really important. It's actually telling me something. It's telling me that in line six, there's a problem. Line six, there's a problem. And the problem is an invalid literal for int with base 10 F. Now I could Google that and find out exactly what it means, but this is a pretty straightforward one. So integers are base 10 numbers, right? And what it's saying is that you have tried to put in F in for this base 10. So obviously F is not a base 10, F is a character, right? F is part of a string. Um, so it's telling us in as clear a term as a programmer can possibly tell us, um, hey, um, you're putting a letter in instead of a number, right? Well, as you know, as a programmer, we need to learn to read that. But as a user, that's crazy. What I need is something like that's a letter, not a number, right? So this is where our try except comes in. So I'm gonna start here at the top and uh, I'm gonna watch the code for errors. That's my pseudo code for try. Use try to watch code for errors. And I'm gonna put in a try and a colon. Now, we know now that if I put a try and a colon, that means there's gotta be a block of code, which means all of this is a block now. So we'll just highlight it and hit tab once to move it in as a block. Now it's gonna try this code. If any error happens, it needs to have an exception. All right, so we need an exception to run if code block. throws an error. And yeah, we really do use the term throw. All right, and what I wanna do, oh, let's do an exception. So accept, um, and let's tell it uh, to give an error message. So there's my pseudo code for that. And I'm gonna print, oops, I can type, I know I can print. You, let's make it pretty you. did not enter an integer, All right? Let me just get rid of those spaces. So what's gonna happen now is if any error happens here, it's gonna say you did not enter an integer. So let's take a look at that. Enter a whole number. Well, if I enter a 10, everything should still work. Great. If I enter an integer, that was an integer. If I enter a string, It's gonna say, you didn't enter an integer, right? Now, here's why I never add code blocks for try and accept until the very end. I'm assuming this is saying you'd entered a string, right? So let's say, instead of saying you did I say you entered a string, you idiot. All right, you idiots implied, right? All right, so 
clearly my user, me, is an idiot because I'm going to try to enter a float. Well, my error is you entered a string. Well, no, I didn't enter a string. I entered a float. I'm sure I entered a float. Right? So it, it doesn't know what's happened, right? It doesn't know that there was a float or that I tried to enter a float. Obviously, it took it as a string anyway, but as a user, I might not know that. I just know I put in an, a number with a decimal and it said you entered a string. And I'm going, I can't be this big of an idiot. That's not letters. Right? So that's kind of one of the problems with try and accept is that it's, it's sort of a hammer uh, no matter what you're trying to do. So if you're trying to fix the engine, you're still using a hammer. So it's not always the best tool for every problem, um, but it is a way to kind of give the user some sort of meaningful feedback. The problem, of course, is that because it doesn't throw any sort of errors, there's no way for me as a programmer to debug that problem now. It's gonna say, you entered a string no matter what goes wrong. Let me show you one more quick example. So I've got this code and let's say, uh, I say just something random and I run it, right? Hopefully it tells me there's a problem, but in this case it didn't. It just said, please enter a whole number. Now I know good and well that's bad, right? But when I enter a whole number, so let's say I enter a whole number, clearly a whole number, it says you entered a string. Well, no, I didn't. I obviously, very clearly, entered a whole number. That's an integer. The program is wrong. The computer's wrong. But no, no, the programmer put bad code in there. But it can't tell you that now because the try accept says no matter what the error is, I want you to do this. Right? So that's why you don't add these try and accepts until your program is fully working. Because no matter what I do under here, I may think I'm doing all kinds of great code, you know, and when I go to run it, it's not going to give me a compile time error. Well, it does if I give it enough problems, but it didn't get, doesn't typically give me a compile time error unless I give it enough problems, right? It's going to try to run the program. Um, and so we want to be really, really careful about that because again if I don't give it a, a big enough error it's just gonna run and then it's not gonna understand the problem right so that's uh, try accepts remember don't do them until the whole program works